Hey there, Internet. Jasmine and Brandon here with some comic book reviews for you. This week we have some reviews like Scarlet Spider number one, Batman and Robin number five, and Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic number one. So, Ooh, let's get to it. Hey there, nerds. Jasmine here with my comic reviews for you. First up is Mega Man number nine. I actually have the trade of this at home. It's a very, very cute kids book that adults can also read. I really like it, the art's very cute, and if you love Mega Man, then you will just love this comic, because it's just Mega Man everywhere. In this issue, everyone is celebrating Mega Man coming home, staying home, and not really fighting evil a whole lot anymore, and then all of a sudden, Zero comes in and attacks him, and craziness ensues, so I definitely would recommend reading it. It's very cool. We love it in my house, and we also love Mega Man in my house, especially Mega Man 10, so if you love it, let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna give it four and a half out of five Nerd Skulls. Next up is The Strange Talents of Luther Strode, number four. In this issue, everything that you wanted to happen in the last three issues finally happens. The random creepy guy that's been running around killing people finally reveals who he is. You get to meet Luther's dad, who like beat up his mom a lot. And Luther gets beat up himself for the first time. So it's really awesome to see the character come so far in so many different ways. And the ending will knock your socks off. If you're not reading this comic, go get all the other issues, get caught up, because I guarantee you it's one of the greatest things that Image has out right now, and you don't want to be missing it. I'm going to give it five out of five nerd skulls. Everything is great about this book. Hey guys, this is Haley. My comic review of the week is for Scarlet Spider number one. And I'm kind of 50-50 on this one. If you haven't read anything like I have about Scarlet Spider, then it's a pretty good place to jump in because they give you a little bit of background so you understand who he is and everything. What I thought was interesting about it was that the fight that he's fighting is against human trafficking, so that's a different turn and I like that. But what I had a problem with is that it's, they give you this whole you know, tortured character with a dark past and they just keep reminding you of it and I felt like they just didn't really move on enough past that. I wanted to kind of see him. If, I, I'm, not, I'm just not sure if there's enough room for him to grow over a long series. So I'm going to have to give it three out of five nerd skulls. Hey there, nerds. Time for my comic book reviews. Starting out with Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, War. It's, gonna be the, it's the first issue, and I liked it. I was a little unsure after first reading. I had to think over it because story was really good. It's set in the Mandalorian War way back in the day with Revan and everything like that. So it's got ties into the Knights of the Old Republic game. And like, I love those games. And so I loved any ties to that. I was like, oh, this could be so cool. Story's really cool. It's got an amazing twist in the end. I just didn't really like the main character. And it's hard to really connect to a comic book when you don't like the main character. And so it really says a lot about the comic book that I still enjoyed it. Because I still, still did enjoy this, and I still want to read the rest of them, even though the main character, he's got like Jedi ideals. He's like, don't want to kill innocents, defending people, stuff like that. But he just comes off as so whiny, as if like, I must protect them. But why? Oh, it just, and it's, it's kind of draggy with that character. But the story is still so good. The plot, the war they were in, the ideas that are coming from it, so much so, I'm still going to give it a four out of five. Next up is Pigs number five. Oh my goodness, this was good. It had such great story development, such great character tension that's like driving through the, them and how they're working out with each other, the looking up to someone but then finding him not to be as good as you want. Like a perfect ideals of how, or showcasing of how somebody's view of somebody can change just by hanging out with them when they had them dreaming of somebody being bigger than what they are. It hit that in such a perfect way where it was so like casually done while still hitting hard with it. And then the big plot that they're doing of trying to break into the prison is so crazy because it's doing little flashes every now and then of what happens at the end. So you're just like, whoa, what's that? That's a lot of blood. Whoa, what's that? That's a lot of blood. Like all of a sudden. And then when it comes to the end, you're like, oh, snap. It was, it was so good, so gripping. The last page, I'm not going to spoil it, but oh my gosh, it makes you go, when's the next one coming out? That was crazy. I'm easily giving this 4.5 out of 5 nerd skulls. So good. Finally, I've got heart number three. Just like the one before, such beautiful art, such an amazing story. I mean, to preface again, I don't care about boxing, but this has a way of gripping me into it. The way the character develops, just like in the last ones, how you could kind of see how he was doing so well, but something bad was gonna happen, that things were gonna go downhill. It's starting to go downhill a little, and you just feel so bad for him because like, you can see his hope, his inspiration, his hard work. You can see all those things, and you see them start to crumble and him still working so hard for it. It's just, it wrenches your heart while still having you rooting for him. And it does such a perfect job of really showing what comic books can do, which is really tying into how the art works. 
the comic book, you have the ability to do so much through the drawings themselves, and that's what this does. It's able to tell a per story perfectly with so few words, just the art, getting so much of the emotion through. I mean, it was amazing. Even if you're not into the story, even if you don't care about this book, pick it up just to see how beautifully it was done, how the story is so well driven just through the art. I'm easily giving this 4.5 out of 5 skulls. What's going on, nerds? Brandon here, and I got some comic reviews for you this week. First up, we got Batman and Robin number 5. This has been definitely one of the stronger Batman books, and I am enjoying it a lot. Uh, you're really getting that relationship with Bruce and Damien that, as we're finding out, isn't perfect. Bruce really drops the ball this issue, and it looks like all is lost, and he's finally realizing what he's done, what he needs to do, uh, how he's supposed to act as a father to his son, Damien. And I just, I really like where this is going. I can't wait to see the next issue because I think it's the end of the storyline. But either way, I'm gonna give this four and a half out of five Nerd Skulls. You guys need to be reading this. Next up, I have Lobster Johnson number one. This has been one of my favorite characters to come out of the Hellboy series. And this issue does not disappoint. Really good, just noir detective book. Don't see much of Lobster Johnson in this, but you really get the idea for the story. I'm giving this four out of five Nerd Skulls. Check it out. Next up is Severed number six. This has been a really cool story thus far. Uh, we joined Jack with the bad guy and he's kind of catching on to what's been happening but not really letting him know. Uh, big things happen in this book. Uh, Jack's finally on the way to his dad's house. Gets a little bit of a surprise. Really can't wait to see how this ends or what they're even going for here. But I'm giving this five out of five Nerd Skulls. Lastly, I have Reed Gunther number seven. This has been a fun book. I've enjoyed reading from the first issue, and this one doesn't let down. Uh, this one, they're hunting a werewolf. A uh, cool little twist. This is such an awesome book. I mean, it, it, it can be a family book. You can just read it for fun. It's just, I can't say enough good things about these guys and this book. I'm giving this five out of five nerd skulls. Hey there, guys. Cubby here with my comic reviews for this week. And my first book is going to be Invincible number 87. Now, I haven't read Invincible for a good long while. I've kept up with pretty much what's going on in the story. I kind of have a fairly good idea of what's going on. And truthfully, this is an, an Invincible issue like every other one. Not in a bad way. It's really good, really well written, really well drawn. Um, and it keeps the story going. It's really, really action-packed and interesting. But it kind of is just the same thing. It's always building up to something bigger and something bigger and something bigger. And, and I guess I've kind of been out of the invincible loop for a little too long to really get it. But I will give this book a good review. It was a really, really good book. It did have a really good story to it. And there was a really good twist at the end, a surprise that like all good comic books really wanted you having, it really left you wanting more. So I'm definitely gonna give this book four out of five nerd skulls. Hey there guys, Cubby here with my second review. It is Captain America number seven. Uh, this book is awesome like always. Rue Baker just knows how to write a book, uh, especially Captain America. He's definitely molded himself into one of the best Captain America writers of all time. Uh, Alan Davis doing pencils on this book is incredible. If you guys do not know who Alan Davis is, go Google him. He's one of the best comic book artists of all time. And this story is just really, really interesting. They're really um, taking Captain America in a new direction, kind of taking away his powers every now and then, giving him a little sense of, of oh crap, I can't do everything that I'm normally able to do. Um, it's not really dealing with age or anything. It's, it, it's still kind of mystery as to how and why he's going through these things, but it's definitely gonna be a ride um, you should be on and you will enjoy. So I'm gonna give this book four out of five Nerd Skulls as well. All right, guys, my final book this week is Green Lantern number five. And like always, this book is ridiculously awesome. Uh, when we left our heroes last, they were kind of in a tight spot. We didn't know how they were going to get out of it. Sinestro always comes out on top, though. I mean, he's been a bad guy for the longest time, but really, he's kind of a badass in this issue, and he really shows how much of a badass he can be. Um, the art, as always, Doug Mankey is doing an incredible job with his detail and his just big visuals. It's really awesome to see this guy like on his on his game on a high, high profile book like this because this is definitely what he deserves to be on. And Jeff Johns is just writing this book like no one else could ever probably do. Um, overall, great story leading to awesome, awesome, awesome things and I cannot wait where this series goes. I'm going to give this book five out of five Nerd Skulls. 
All right, that is going to do it for all the comic reviews this week. But until next week, be sure to check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, as well as nerdlocker.com for all your nerdy news. My name is Brandon. And I'm Jasmine. We'll see you next week for even more comic book reviews.